Good morning. Hope you guys are doing well. All right, so I am going uh, to show you how to marbleize acrylic today. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all the same steps that we've been practicing for um, the past few months. A lot of it probably um, is stuff that we've gone over a few times, but for those of you guys who don't understand how to do this, this is really going uh, to help you tremendously. All right, let's get right to this. All right, so what we wanna be able to do is, we wanna go ahead and prep the surface of the natural nail. Um, well, or the trainer hand, whatever you guys are working on today. And uh, I wanna be able to use my electric file uh, to gently remove shine from the surface of the nail that we're working on. So I wanna be able just to lightly tickle that away and feather away the shine, right? In one direction, all the way through from corner to corner. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple fingers because there's a couple things that I want to be able to show you before we actually get into the design. Marbleizing is great for free edge work. Marbleizing is great for background work. Marbleizing is great uh, if you're doing all different types of uh, intricate types of designs, but again, at the end of the day, it's I think it's something that everyone needs to know. You can do it with acrylic, you can do it with gel, you do a gel paint. I'm choosing to do this with color powders. How do I order the color powders for your website? www.youngnails.com. You got to set up an account. All right, if you have any technical questions, you could just call customer service. They'll be able to help you out. All right, so what we're going to end up doing after we clean the surface with swipe, we're going to protein bond the surface of the nail. I've been getting a lot of... Um, I'm getting a lot of students of mine that are asking me questions about, um, you know, other acrylic systems. And to tell you the truth, I, I, I have no idea at all. The only system that I'm really familiar with is this, <laughs> because this is my system. Um, it, you know, if, if it comes to technical issues with other brands, you really are going to have to get in touch with those companies to figure it out. If they can't figure it out for you, there's always young nails. All right. So we have this prepped and ready to go. Okay. So this is what I want to be able to show you. So we're going to be working with uh, a few different colors here. I'm going to be working with gullible green. I'm going to be working with turquoise. I'm going to be working with purple. I just chose three different colors to play around with. Um, if you are doing something over the surface of the natural nail, um, then what you can do to protect the natural nail is by actually taking a little bit of clear powder and instead of actually laying down um, a, what's it called, a, a color directly on top, because you have to remember if you're putting color on top, then you're always going to have an issue when it comes to the rebalance. So here's the thing. I'm always thinking about... I'm always thinking about what do I have to do when the customer comes back in two weeks, two to three weeks, sometimes a month. You know, am I going to have to dig it off the natural nail? If somebody has uh, color, <clears throat> especially acrylic, all the way down to the natural nail, it's going to be very difficult for me to be able to rebalance that or maintain it if I have to dig it off. If you're going to protect the natural nail by actually putting down a little bit of clear, it's going to make it a little bit easy because if you have to file all the way down, then you're not going to file all the way down to the surface. When you get down to that clear layer, you know that you're clear, right? So the, the key is to protect it, and that's what you want to be able to do. A lot of times before, like if I'm doing any type of marbleizing, especially that deep, um, I'm, I'm really, really careful about doing this. I'm 
not going to be marbleizing on the natural nail. I'm gonna be showing you what we're going to be doing so that when we take it to the tip um, on the free edge, you're going to see what I'm, I'm actually talking about. So again, right on the natural nail, this is a practice. This is just practice. I wanna be able to show you what I'm doing, but if I had to do this, then I, what I wanna be able to do is just brush on a, just a really, really small amount of clear. And the reason why I like to do this is because the acrylic is going to, um, you know, if I'm laying it down, there's a little piece of glitter right there, but just giving that little, you know, smooth surface with acrylic, it's gonna be really easy for the uh, product to marbleize, especially on an acrylic surface. But you can see, I just literally brushed that on like nothing. That is going to act as a barrier if I was doing anything on top. Okay, so let's, again, break down some of the color that we're going to be working with. You can see um, I have turquoise, I have purple, and I have gullible green, three shades, all different uh, colors. The best thing to do if you're working on a surface like this is, again, choose a color. Before I actually go here, I wanna be able to show you guys on a tile. So if I'm working with marble, if there's one way of actually marbling, you can pick up, right, th three points like I just did, and then when you set that down, you can see that I'm going to be able to create a really, really cool marble with the acrylic by touching three points on the brush. Now, again, if I keep messing with this, it's going to turn into mud. So I don't wanna be able to do that. Um, what we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to work with the acrylic at its uh, wettest point. And, you know, again, depending on the surface area that you're working on, you might have to pick up multiple pearls. Another way of, of working is by actually taking individual dots, take a dot, take a dot, take a dot, and then again, use this as a means, right, to actually create some sort of marble. All right, so you can see how, and I don't want to drag everything around the edges, but you can see how I'm actually able to create a marbled effect by dropping down three beads of acrylic. It looks pretty cool. Um, again, I'm not doing a design. I'm just showing you on the surface so that when we actually transfer this to actually a free edge work, you're going to see how it, it works. So again, there's two ways of doing it. You can um, pick it up, uh, you can set it down. Personally, I like this technique. I like to set them down individually while they're wet and then use the tip of the brush to go ahead and kind of maneuver it into place. This is really um, uh, probably the easiest way that you're going to be able to achieve a level of perfection when it actually comes to marbleizing acrylic. Black and white looks sick. Uh, again, you wanna be able to pick contrasting colors. It's very hard to marbleize with like glitter powders. Um, you know, you, you wanna be able to work with solid colors. That's what, it, that's what it really comes down to. Okay, so let's go ahead and transfer it to this. Now, if I'm working or creating a tip, I need to pick a color that I can extend with that's really gonna make the colors um, explode. And like at the end of the day, like if you're choosing clear, the problem with clear sometimes is that uh, the level of transparency is going to show, uh, can show a shadow. So a shadow is like you could see through it. And I don't, I don't want that. What I want to be able to do is I need a level of opacity so that um, it's going to really shine bright. I'm trying to find, I don't know why I don't have it here, but let's go ahead and choose... I do have, I could just use cover pink. Let's go ahead and do that. I was looking for core white, but I don't have it in my drawer. It's my own problem, should have prepared. All right, so let's go ahead and take cover pink, right? And let's go ahead and build a tip. Okay, so for all of you guys out there that are, again, learning to sculpt, um, easiest way is to take your form and then go ahead and place the tab underneath. Go ahead and pre-pinch your form 
all the way through. Hold the form here. It gives you an opportunity to open up that C-curve. And what you want to be able to do, again, is hold it at the base. So you can see I'm holding it with one hand. I'm just resting on my hand. I come in at an angle, and then I use this hand to lift it all the way up. Uh, for those of you guys that are struggling with nail forms, we've got a ton of videos on YouTube. You're going to be able to manage uh, some really, really great uh, form customizing by referencing that. Next week, I'll, I'll spend a day uh, going over it in detail so that you guys can see. Okay, so again, submersing your brush all the way in, tapping, bounce, bounce, bounce is the best way you're going to get your bead, okay? Do not water ski across the surface. That's going to give you inconsistency. If you have a really dry brush, and what I mean by dry is pulling out a lot of monomer from your brush. If, if you stab or surf the surface, you're going to run into issues. If you submerse your brush and you bat, one bounce is going to give you a small bead. Same amount, right? Two bounces is going to give you a little bit bigger. Sorry, let me move these out of the way. Three, right? Bounce, bounce, bounce is going to give you even bigger. And then obviously, if you have a lot of liquid, bounce, 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 bounce. Four is going to give you a lot larger. Um, I've I also had a couple people ask me, does it matter the size of brush that you use? A bigger brush is going to pick up a bigger pearl, but you can obviously pick up the same size beads with a number eight. Um, you just need more liquid on your brush. Okay, so again, if I submerse my brush, depending on the length I'm going with, I'm going to go with active length, right? I'm going to tap it off and I'm going to bounce, bounce. I'm going to get myself a really nice bead. I'm going to tap off the excess because I don't want it to dry. You're going to notice that when I actually set it, um, I don't want to run, sorry. You're gonna notice when I set it to the surface, it's not going to run. I need to use the body of my brush. No, so notice the body, it's almost the very, very bottom, right? The very bottom, right? I'm using to work all the way up to the top. So for those of you guys that are actually following me and doing this at the exact same time, notice that not only do I get it to the corners, but I continue to walk back over the corner. I don't like to just go here and then jump to the other side. I always try to get it as even as I can on one side and then literally go back over the top. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to work in something sharp, right? I'm just really working on the base of my brush. It doesn't have to be super pointed, but what we can do again is is continuously work from side to side. I'd like to take my time and get this as as even as I possibly can. Right, that's going to come back and file really tight after I'm finished. If again you choose to take a a smaller bead and add it right here to kind of create a full well tip, you can continue to go on and build on to the next nail. And then what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to come in and pinch. If you have acrylic right here, let me show you something. If you have acrylic all the way up through this area, this area I'm just brushing. And the reason why I'm just kind of brushing it through is I'm trying to create almost a really thin extension of the free edge that I built. This is like putting a full well, well tip on the nail. So since I have a full well here, if I decided to continue to this finger to build out a nail, I could actually come back and pinch right here on the sides, right, with the inside of my fingers, or I could use a magic wand to be able to do that, or I could use a lot of the pinching tools that are on the market. There's a lot of uh, different things that you can pinch with, but a little old school technique, low G technique, man, is if you come in and use the insides of your thumbs. So because you have that full well acrylic built up here, it's like a cast. You're going to be able to cast that tip so that when you're pinching, you're going to be able to put pressure right there, right there, so that you're going to be able to add a little bit more degree of C-curve. It really helps with individuals who have wide natural nails. You're going to have individuals that um, uh, basically have bit nails. You're going to be able to transform that finger into something that's actually a lot thinner. Okay, so what we're going to end up doing is this. We're going to end up taking the three colors that we have. I'm going to drop, I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in so that you guys can see the nail, but what I'm going to end up doing is um, 
dropping wet pearls so that I could focus on the marble, right? So again, I'm going to take a, 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 a bead of, of this. I'm going to take a bead of this. I'm going to take a bead of purple, maybe another bead of purple. And then what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to marbleize, right? I need to come in and again, what I'm trying to create is something that is really nicely marbleized on the tip. I don't want to overwork it because then what ends up happening is it turns to mud. So being very, very careful once I actually have it up here on the top. Here on the very, very top, I'm not really concerned. I kind of want to just kind of blend that in. So I use the tip of my brush because if I'm using the base of my brush, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm, I'm going to end up kind of messing up that air, a, area. So once I actually have it marbleized down, you could always, if there's areas that are missing from the side, you know, you can double dip your acrylic and then use that to kind of like just kind of guide into place, right? You can see I'm just kind of filling in a little bit of space, not a big deal, just to fill in the necessary space that I need. And obviously there's a lot of different things that you can do. If I decided that I wanted to continue to marble all the way through the body, I can continue to do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to create a nice little glitter fade, right? So we'll leave that for a second and what I'm gonna do is come through. I didn't pre-mix it because I wanted to show you guys how to do that as well. So if I have um, empty container and I'm gonna actually take some speed clear, I'm gonna fill it up to about this point, right, right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take uh, royal blue. Let's go ahead and go with a heavy concentration of royal blue and then a little bit of shock. This color is sick. And then a um, little bit of star sand right over the top. Let's go ahead and cap this. And then I'm just gonna roll it, right? I'm, gonna just, I'm, I'm literally just rolling it in, in my hands so that it mixes really, really well. I'm using this as kind of my ombre color between the actual marble and the natural nail. That way when I cap it with clear, you're not gonna see this smear up onto the nail. You're gonna see that really, really tight color. You're going to be able to see if I take this out, I just kind of lay it down right here. You can see what that looks like, okay? So that's going to be really easy color to go ahead and ombre. This is getting to a point right now where I know I have enough flexibility to come in and just kind of pinch it. It's not going to mess the design up and get that really, really tight. So for those of you guys, again, that are, you know, always focused on trying to get it nice and tight, it's been about a few minutes, so I can kind of mold that into shape. You can even see if I take it off, right, I have that really nice extension on the tip. What I'm gonna do is take this, and again, a very little amount, don't need a lot, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that right in between the line. I'm just going to lightly feather that into the body and then use the tip of my brush to kind of fade this so it looks like shooting stars, All right? So it goes almost natural nail, ombre into glitter, ombre into a really nice marble tip, All right? So if there are edges that are exposed, you could always take just a small little bit amount, come in, touch this up. Um, you can take cover pink. If you decided that you wanted to do uh, an ombre with uh, cover pink all the way through, you're going to be able to do that. For me, I know that this design is gonna grow out, right? So the line of, de like uh, that line of demarcation, right, where that, that full well extension is, the, it probably is gonna grow out, that is gonna grow out to here and about 
two to three weeks, it's going to be a little bit easier for me to take it down to that point and fill the back end. Also, if I decided that I wanted to do a fill or rebalance the whole design off the front end, I could clip it off, put a new form on, change out the design, do a completely different fade. All right, so when we are actually doing uh, clear over the surface, you're going to be able to see from the top, you can see how thin my extension is. There is, like I've created a, a, a canvas to cover. Now, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to take, again, a large bead of, of clear. I want to be able to set this down again right here. I'm going to release it and then use the tip of my brush. I need it to, to level. So as it starts to flow down over the design, I'm going to lightly pull from the front. Most of the thickness is going to stay within this section here. I'm going to be able to use the body of my brush and just kind of balance it. If I'm, like a lot of people, what they end up doing is trying to force the corners, don't force the, force the edges. You want to be able to brush your edges so that it becomes really nice and flush to the surface. And then as everything starts to set, I start to brush everything through. This is going to create a really, really natural upper arch. It's going to cap the back end. It's going to make it completely tight all the way around. And then I want to be able to fill the front end with another bead. I'm going to go backwards this time. I'm going to set it down right over the top. Again, use the body of my brush, hold it, let it run, let it run, barely touch the surface, barely touch the surface. I'm using the tip of my brush, just tickle it all the way down over the top. I don't need to force it. Once I have this into shape, it's really a matter of using the body of your brush to kind of, this is where you're manipulating it and kind of sculpting it into form. And then as soon as it starts to dry, this is where you're going to be able to brush it. Brushing it is going to smooth the surface so that it makes it a lot easier for you to file. I see a lot of times when students send me the work before they're filing and they're like, why does it look like this? I'm like, because you're sitting here playing with it so much and then you end up playing with it so much that you have indentations all the way through the nail. I start to attack it with my brush, right, to kind of smooth the surface out so that when I file, I'm done. That's caps ready to go and then I'm ready to file. Okay. So that is, do you guys prefer acrylic color or gel polish? Are you talking to me or the crowd? Um, if I'm doing gel marble over the surface, honestly, the easiest thing to do is use uh, manicure gel polish. I would sculpt the nail and cover pink. I would marbleize the surface with, um, with a gel paint or a gel polish. And it, that's like the easiest thing to remove and reapply, guaranteed. With this, this is more permanent design. This is more expensive for sure because it's a fully sculpt nail. Um, and at the end of the day, it depends on, on what you want to do. It also depends on, oh, you guys are talking, awesome. So it all depends on, you know, what uh, you have to offer. Um, sometimes customer comes in late, right? Or you only have a limited amount of time to do design. They're going to be able to bang out a set of nude nails. You're gonna be able to throw some art over the top. Easiest way to do art is surface art, glitter press, gel polish, marbleizing, a little bit of detail paint, you could stamp. I mean, there's so many things that you could do on top to create a level of intricacy um, that you're not gonna be able to do or you're gonna be able to get away with, right? Instead of actually sculpting it out from the base all the way to the top. This level of, of sculpting is obviously, it's a lot more intense. However, uh, it also looks way more dimensional because you're building it from the bottom all the way to the top. You're creating a fully sculpted nail. Um, all of you guys that continue to send me your work, I love it. It's just like I, I get messages every single day from every single uh, one of you guys about uh, the work that you've done. If I haven't gotten back to you, give me a chance. My, my message box is absolutely inundated. So I'm definitely going through. Um, I will definitely get back to you, I promise. All right, how long should a full set take normally? Depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a full set of like, if you're doing a full set of one color nude active length nails, uh, you should shoot for an hour. If it's taking you three, 
don't worry, it took me four when I started. All right, so we are, come to New York. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> as long as this pandemic is raging, I'm doing classes here and you guys can follow me live every single day. As soon as there's treatment for COVID, then we're gonna start classes up again. So we all have to just be patient. All right, let's go ahead and get right to filing. I miss New York City though. My gosh, I cannot wait for the day where I can go back out there. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful. All right, so again, you know, when we are filing this, um, I have to make sure. So it, it, again, it's like if I'm looking at the very, very top, right, you can see like how much I actually have to file on this side. Then if I break it on that side, you're going to see how much I have to file on that side to get it really, really nice. So if I, if I take my hand file and I swivel down towards the tip of the nail, I'm still creating a, a very flat edge. You know, sometimes my phone thinks I'm actually asking for SIRI. Uh, I'm sure for those of you guys that have uh, an iPhone, you get it. It's trippy. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to file all the way through. I'm just going to lightly file my edges so that we can keep it as pointed as we possibly can. Again, building a straight ledge. You can see I'm holding my hand file while I'm doing that. I do not hold my hand file like this. If you hold your hand file like this, you need to change. You have to be able to balance so that your your pointer finger is on one side and if you're working the other side. So for your lefties, it's the same thing. Don't hold it like this. You need to hold it like this so that you have balance pushing here, and then you have balance with your thumb pushing on the other side. It's very, very important. Um, there's technique involved even to the most subtle things when it actually comes to shaping and filing. So you have to be able to have really good balance with your hand file so that I'm taking advantage with the whole surface area of my hand file while I'm working, right? You can see the position. I don't hold it way up here and pick at it. Right? I'm not picking or holding it like this and picking at it. I have to be able to grip it right, so that I have my finger on one side as I'm coming down uh, to actually balance all the way through. Here on the opposite side, you can see the extension. I need to start at the lowest point and I need to file up and in, right, so that my lower arch is going to end up completely straight, keeping, uh, you can see how the file is parallel to the finger. It's the same on the opposite side. I have all that extension. So you can see all that cover pink right there. Lowest point is going to be here, right? So I need to file up and in until it becomes completely straight. Do not take your hand file, come into the corner and try to file up. You will build a notch right there. So all you badasses who already can file really, really well, this is gonna change your life. For those of you guys that are beginning and you don't understand how to shape, Again, this is, this is how it's done. Again, I'm at the lowest point. And what I wanna be able to do is maintain that contact all the way through until my hand file reaches the side. You can see how it literally comes up and I'm able to get it super, super straight. You see that? All the way to the edge. I don't put a notch in the corner. That's That's, Shaping your, your sides is detrimental to how straight your nails are going to look. I mean, that is what it, uh, what it comes down to. I focus on it every single day during my classes. I will continue to remind everybody out there who is a nail enthusiast uh, on how to properly shape. So you're gonna notice again at the side, I don't really have to do that much filing. I'm gonna be able to lightly touch it up. I'm filing through the upper arch upper arch, lower arch, upper arch, lower arch, side walls, right? Check this out. Side walls, side walls, upper arch, lower arch is the bottom. Okay. So for those of you guys, again, when I'm referencing certain points of the nail, right? Upper arch, lower arch is going to be down here on the bottom. It's not technically an arch, but that is exactly what it is called. Your sidewalls are your sides. Underneath is 
your lower arch. Okay, so here the upper arch, <clears throat> if I'm looking at it from the side profile, I want to be able, again, I'm running my electric file about 9,000 RPMs. I'm following through. You can see that I have really good balance. I'm going to come through the front of the nail to get my C curve. I'm coming in one direction all the way through to make sure to see how round it is. I need to get this side rounded off as well. One direction all the way through. I am not going side to side, right? You can nice, you can see how really nice that becomes. And then as I go around the cuticle area in one direction, I'm not trying to get it tight. I'm trying to take down bulk. And then I'm going to follow through the body of the nail once I'm finished. This is going to take off the excess. So the nail, as you can see, is pretty much done. All I'm going to have to do at this point is do a little bit of refinement. So I'm going to actually come in. I'm going to use my hand file. I'm going to try to get this. Yeah, you can start to see how sharp, right? You can start to see how sharp the front end looks. And then I'm going to come around the, the cuticle area, and I'm filing down one side. You can see the position of my hand as well. I have my, my finger up here as I'm gripping. I'm not holding it like this. Holding it from the top it allows me to come down in one direction, so my file marks are all this way. When I'm working this side, my finger is here, contact, contact, contact. Contact, contact, contact up, let it slide down. Contact, let it slide. Contact, let it slide. Contact, 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 right? All the way through. And then once I'm done doing that, it's always, uh, uh, I'm literally going back and forth from this to this. And then you're going to see, right, how sharp this is. And then I do my last bit of filing by looking down the barrel of the nail. And I make a peace sign again, right? I rest it in between my knuckle, my thumb rests on top. I'm going to go down client profile. So I'm going to be able to build a really nice C curve or just really nice. You can see from this point, like from that back end, how tight that is going to be. And then you're going to see, once I wipe it off, boom, look at that. That's how we're going to create that, like, that nice fade all the way through. You can see that, like it's kind of crazy. You can see the glitter fading into that. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of top coat. Sorry, hand. Let me put you back together. All right, so let's get a little bit of standard resistant top coat. Uh, just a general rule of thumb for all of you guys that are beginning as well. Um, what I'll do after I'm finished is I'll just make sure I come around my edges. I don't want ledges, right? So I don't want to feel a ledge around any point of the perimeter of the nail. So I'll usually come through at the very end to be able to do that. Um, if you have any natural nail that is exposed, uh, one of the things I do recommend is to take protein bond and just come around the perimeter of the nail just like that. That way, if you're putting a top coat down, it's going to anchor it around that back end and you're not going to have any flaking of your top coat. Let's go ahead and put a nice coat of, of, of stain resistant top coat over the surface. You're going to be able to see that killer fade. Ta -da. All right. So always from beginning to end, you're going to be able to see how the nail is done. You know, again, let's look at it from all perspectives. Get out of the way and you can see the shape you can see everything I'm trying to get. Stupid phone. Okay, right? That's what you want to be able to do. All right. Wicked. Wicked cool. All right. So set that inside the light for 60 seconds. Wipe that off, and you're going to have a stain resistant surface. There's no hair dye that's going to be able to penetrate that. All right, cool. Um, again, focusing on all the fundamentals. All the small details lead to a bigger picture, lead to perfection. 
I'm gonna continue to do this every single day. Last week we did gel, this week is acrylic. Um, tomorrow, what I'm gonna focus on is actually taking this down and then changing it out, right? So the customer comes in, they're like, yo, I don't want that shape anymore. I wanna to go to coffin. So how do you remove it, change it out to a completely different shape? These are things that you have to be able to master. This is what turns an average nail tech into an absolute nail ninja is your maintenance skills. How to remove and reapply like that. That's what it comes down to. Um, the turquoise color uh, is, it is turquoise. It is inside the uh, Imagination Art Line. Sorry, it's blurry right there. Just trying to focus on my ugly mug. So turquoise, boom, right there. Um, if you guys have any questions, hit me up. Always here, Young Nails, same exact thing. We're always here to help. And um, I am absolutely uh, excited about a lot of the progress that you guys are making. I see it. You guys are sending it to me. You know, I am moved emotionally by some of the comments that you guys are making because I know that it's making a huge difference in uh, your careers and your lives. And I will continue to do this daily uh, because I owe it to you. That is a fact. Thank you guys so much for your time. I love you dearly. If you guys have any questions, hit me up. Peace.